Thank you, Chair. There, there are so many great witnesses, and I, I think uh, I'll, I'll start with questions to Ms. Boniadi and uh, uh, ask other other witnesses questions in other rounds or later later in this one. Uh, first of all, thank you for emphasizing your support for listing the IRGC as a terrorist organization. Uh, Parliament uh, has uh, passed motions, uh, one unanimously just a couple weeks ago, uh, and then another one six years ago that passed with a majority as well. Unfortunately, they have not been implemented by the executive executive branch here, and we continue to reiterate calls for the IRGC to be listed as a terrorist organization. Could you share more with us about specifically why this step is important, what impact this would have in terms of human rights in Iran and, and uh, accountability for perpetrators of abuses? Uh, and if there's any insights you can share from other countries that have taken action against the IRGC and the impact that those actions have had, we'd uh, appreciate hearing it. Thank you very much for the question. Um, if you look at, for example, Europe, they're, they're very, uh, you know, they've, they're moving forward with um, uh, support for uh, designating the IRGC. I think where there is a thriving and vibrant uh, Iranian diaspora in, in places like Canada, where there's a democracy, uh, the, the will of the people should be reflected in your policies. And... Uh, if you look at a Pew Research poll, for example, that was done in 2020, it showed that three quarters uh, or more of people in 14 advanced uh, economies had a negative view on human rights in Iran. That was only exasperated, I'm sure, by the woman life freedom protests that resonated really with people across the world, especially in democracies. Um, so you'll see in the Euro European Union, for example, um, that the European Commission president uh, and members of, of the European Parliament are really pushing for this. If you look at places like uh, the US, where there's already a, a designation that exists, um, people are safer uh, than people than places in, say, the United Kingdom or uh, Europe, where transnational re re repression really exists. We have the example of, in London, for example, um, Iranian journalist Puri Azerati being stabbed outside his home, which is looking more and more like it was a contracted job by the Islamic Republic. Public. If we want to keep people safe, we have to uh, list the IRGC. The argument that dialogue, for example, uh, is important is, is really something that we should uh, move past from. 45 years of dialogue has not kept people safe uh, and, and people are still being targeted. So I encourage you to please, please list the IRGC um, and, and listen to your, your vibrant and flourishing diaspora. And I know that Canada has been an, a leader in, in many ways. You were the first to um, call the 1988 massacre of, of thousands of Iranian what it was, crime, a crime against humanity. And I think you should lead in this and not wait for others to do it first. Thank you. Th thank you very much. I wanted to follow up as well, but just first of all to say, uh, I think your point that, that uh, drawing out information from the United States, highlighting how people are safer as a result of this terrorist listing, uh, that it makes a concrete uh, difference in terms of combating transnational repression and keeping members of the diaspora communities uh, safe is, is very important testimony. It's In a way, it's obvious, but it's very important that you've, you've put that on the record. Uh, I want to uh, probe the point you made about uh, adding uh, recognition of gender apartheid in the Crimes Against Humanity Treaty. Uh, this is something that, uh, that I'm very supportive of. We hosted an event this morning focusing on uh, Afghanistan and gender apartheid uh, there. Uh, so I know we're hearing these calls from, uh, from the Iranian community as well as from, uh, from activists seeing the situation in Afghanistan. If you could share a little bit about kind of the mechanics of that treaty process uh, and what the Canadian government could do to, uh, to help advance that uh, recognition of gender apartheid. Um, I believe there's written testimony being uh, submitted or that has been submitted by the strategic litigation project of the Atlantic Council that I urge uh, all members to uh, take a look at uh, that that details exactly how it's done but I just want to reiterate as Ms. Ashenjam also said that when we define gender when we add gender to the definition of apartheid and it's not just race we have the opportunity to then hold perpetrators to account we can't do that right now and and countries like Iran and Afghanistan really do have uh, you know systemic and this is not just uh, discrimination against women which exists in many places this is severe systemic segregation and discrimination um, that we're talking about. And once we do that, once we have it in uh, international law, we can then hold perpetrators to account. It's really as simple as that. 
Thank you. Uh, Ms. Afshinjan, uh, having mentioned the, the gender apartheid issue as well, could you add your thoughts on that? Yes, absolutely. We now have 10 states supporting the consideration of gender apartheid in the draft Crimes Against Treaty, and we would love to see Canada do the same. So it's just Canada using the term. Can you wrap it out, Parliamentarians please? Can you wrap it out? The time is over, please. Oh, excuse me? Sorry, the time is out. I, I give you a few seconds to finish because time is out, please. Okay. I was just saying we, we hope that Canada and parliamentarians start using the word gender apartheid so that it becomes recognized and um, for this campaign to end gender apartheid. Canada was behind with the leadership of Brian Mulroney at the time, convincing uh, leaders like Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher to get on board and champion the cause for ending racial apartheid in South Africa. So we are hoping Canada will also take the lead because it really is about political will. If our parliamentarians want to see an end to gender apartheid in Iran, and if you collaborate with your European allies and Australian allies, we can make this, this happen. And Thank it's you. not just a symbolic gesture. Thank oh, sorry. you. I think you Thank you, Madam. Thank, Thank you. Just, just one I'll more question for me. I'll be happy to speak much. to you more about it afterwards. Thank you. Thanks very much.